Welcome back. So last time you saw I had the design for this new lower bracket in CAD and so I've gone and removed the old one here and what I'm doing is setting up the strut there with um, basically vertical and just pulling some measurements just to make sure that I got the right tube length because everything's slightly different than what's in the CAD just because of you know the geometry and everything the rate the stance of the aircraft I wanted to make sure that that strut is uh, totally vertical and maybe just even slightly raked back a little bit when the aircraft is just sitting static on the ground. So I got that pulled out and then uh, the materials, I was waiting on the materials to show up so there's the old bracket there. So I've got to just duplicate that and you see I've got a template underneath there, a couple of ones that I made that I wrap around the tubing and then that gives me the cut lines and I still end up using um, the hole saw to do it um, to cope the holes. So the material showed up there. Um, this is on Monday. So I got the you know tubes for the ends and the cross tube there, the square one, and then the other tubes. And I've gone with a 60 wall on those ones now. They were a 45 thou wall. So you can see I got my template taped on there and uh, time to get that in my little um, coping thing or fish mouth device there for coping those and drill it out and unfortunately uh, my blade that I had there or my hole saw there was a three quarter one was getting a little bit old and then having to cut 4130 with a blade that's really not designed for that is always uh, risky so I got the first one cut on both ends and now this is the third one and I'll show you you know when I put some uh, cutting fluid on there just to make it easier and you'll see how much smoke that generates but uh, ultimately when I ended up cutting this one as you'll see here, uh, ended up basically breaking a couple of teeth off there. That's not the teeth flying right now, that's the metal. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I ended up um, breaking the teeth here that you'll see in a second. So the last cut there I had to do by hand just with a hacksaw and then um, finish it up with the, um, the air tool. So you can see how hot that's getting. And yeah, that right there is when I broke some teeth off that um, hole saw and gouged that metal tube a little bit but it was still usable so I cleaned it all up by putting it in the vise as you see here and uh, just using um, one of the metal tools that we use on there for doing all this sort of work this with the air tool and just got the shape right and I end up sitting in this little short bit of tube in there just to make sure that the fish mouth is is a uh, you know a nice decent fit Brit likes to make sure or likes to make it that I've got good fit and finish on this stuff uh, when he welds it up so it doesn't have to fill big gaps and I did a fairly good job one of them had a little bit of a gap but anyway now we're up at Brits and I finished off doing cutting the short bits and all that sort of stuff so Brig, uh, Brit just set up a little bit of a, a jig there with some spacers and uh, got the two arms welded up first and here he's just tacking the ends there for that cross brace the square cross brace so anyway, he ended up getting that done for me um, by Monday afternoon. And so I was back at the hangar and uh, didn't take me that long and I got it installed. So, but not enough time to obviously test it for Monday. So now we're on to uh, Tuesday. Well, actually this is uh, Monday afternoon when I got it installed. And as you can see there, didn't take too much effort to get it in there. and. Uh, so now it's uh, holding, as you'll see here in a second, um, 89.8 degrees. So that's 0.2 degrees raked aft. So I've got a good trail on there. Before it was 75 degrees the other way. So as you can see, it looks good. And um, the question is, you know, is it going to do what we need to do? Okay, so now we're on to Tuesday, and uh, the first thing I noticed when I was pulling the aircraft out there using the tug was it was much easier to steer it with the geometry like this because it wasn't the wheel wasn't on, a, on an angle, and of course uh, as soon as I started taxing it, the the difference was uh, you know extreme, uh, much easier to taxi. It didn't want to pull into a lock by itself like it was doing before, you know, lock or you know turning hard left or hard right. If anything, it wanted to straighten itself out. Uh, after being um, you know in a turn which is ideal and what you want so the trailing uh, aspect of it is working fine so here I'm just taking it across the runway and to the area 
you know, on the other side there where I've got a little bit of room to manoeuvre around next to where all the other aircraft are parked there and I just wanted to taxi it around for a little bit and just see how it felt and see, uh, you know, what, what it was like when I pulled it into a turn and got it out of a turn and, and when I pulled it into like a really tight, like a full lock turn, um, how easy um, it was to get out because before if I pulled it into a full lock turn as I mentioned a while ago you'd really have to um, do a little bit of dancing on the brakes and run the throttle up quite a bit in order to sort of break it out of that turn because of the geometry and uh, as you can see here I'll just show you I'll let you watch it a little bit I just did a couple of 360s here in both directions uh, just to see how it uh, came out so I'll let you watch that for a second So as you can see there, that uh, right main wheel there almost basically turned around on a point. Uh, so when you take it into a full lock, you can really turn, that, turn it around in its own space, which is nice. Um, 60 degrees of turning on that nose wheel. So I'm happy with how it was uh, taxiing and, and handling there. So I thought I'd just take it down the runway real slow, um, not, you know, not accelerate fast or anything, and just to see... Um, you know if there was any other problems there and see how it was handling and you know ultimately I wanted to find out if the nose uh, shimmy was gone so uh, I'll let you uh, watch this run And yes, the shimmy is back, but uh, interestingly enough, this time it was only after going uh, up to the maximum speed that I took it to and then slowing down somewhat, then it actually came in. And it wasn't anywhere near as bad as it was, it was before, um, obviously because of now it's mostly trailing. So I'm still trying to analyze exactly uh, what caused it this time. And I've got a few ideas of things that I'm going to try. Uh, the first one's going to be taking some nitrogen out of the strut because I have a feeling that the centering mechanism engaged and that helped pull it to one side and then it disengaged and which let it come back to where it was tracking and then ultimately that two movements uh, initiated the shimmy but I'll let you watch it from a different angle uh, here in a second so this is uh, me pulling onto the runway again so I've got you know what's it four different camera angles for you to see through this and uh, I don't know maybe you guys can put some suggestions out to what you think uh, might be uh, you know causing this now um, you know whether it's still the geometry needs to be adjusted or air pressure in the tire or sit pressure in the in the strut or whatever anyway I'm open to suggestions but I'll let you watch this for a little bit
So as you can see from that little graph there on the bottom left corner, it wasn't until after I was slowing down that the shimmy actually kicked in. And uh, it actually lasted a little bit longer this time. It wasn't, you see it's still shimming there. It wasn't until about 16 miles an hour that it stopped. So obviously the difference in geometry is having an effect on the whole thing. And uh, I'll let you watch it from this angle now. So if you saw on that one, it looks like there was a bump in the runway that it hit, which compressed the strut, and then when it came back out again, I think the centering mechanism engaged, and that's what triggered it. So anyway, that's my thoughts right now. And here it is from the front view, the same type of uh, slow mos. And you can see there it almost got going but then it stopped for some reason and then through these next few frames it's nice and steady again uh, before it kicks in and you'll see that there's a, it hits a bump and that's what triggers it and whether or not it's the strut uh, hitting the, the centering mechanism that causes it to trigger I'm not sure yet but um, I think by taking some pressure out of there and avoiding it from hitting the centering mechanism may be the solution but anyway you'll see it uh, trigger right here. So I'm open to suggestions, but that's what I'm going to try first. Uh, we also thought about trying a different weight oil inside of the strut because there is a shimmy damper built into that strut. It's a hydraulic one where fluid has to go from one side of this block to another, and that's what provides the damping. 
Um, also open to suggestions on the tire pressure. I think I'm going to run it with 35. I believe I had about 40 psi in there um, on this test today. Uh, but if anybody has any other ideas, otherwise um, we're going to be p potentially going with more of a rake with maybe adjusting the fork or using a different fork. Right now, the center of the axle is two inches behind the center of the, s the rotation of the strut. And I believe that's um, a quarter of an inch less than what it is on the Lancers. But then the Lancers uh, normally run a smaller tire as well. They're running a 5x5. Five five, and I believe that probably has a 12 inch diameter, whereas I'm running a 6x6 six six, uh, 15, which has a 15 inch uh, diameter. Uh, anyway, that's the update for the first half of this week. Thanks for your suggestions if you're going to post them. And um, tune in again on Saturday and uh, see what kind of progress we make trying to fix this problem. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.